Hey everyone, we're back and we are beginning uh, chapter 9, section 1. We've skipped chapter 8, we'll come back to that later. But um, we're in our revolution section and so we were talking about the American, the French Revolution, scientific, and now another sort of nonviolent revolution, the Industrial Revolution. How exciting. Yeah. And it is going to transform life uh, forever in the world. So we're going to go from when most of the people were farmers to now the majority of people are working in the cities and, and most are working in the factories. Yeah. It's amazing to go from that, like working with your hands and then all of a sudden being able to work with these machines. Seeing that picture there, it looks like the textile industry, a lot of women working on making cloth to make clothes. And these factories were dangerous. If a, mm -hmm. if a person's long hair, not mine. Oh, uh, maybe were, mine. Maybe yours were to get caught in one of those machines, that could mean... Scalping and death. death. So it sounds a little silly, but we needed to start with the agricultural revolution or changes in farming um, in order to begin the industrial revolution. So these improvements in agriculture, so just a few things, um, you know, rotating crops, um, breaking off farms into little sections so that way um, the farmers had more land to work with. Um, new inventions such as the seed drill, um, the plow, um, allowed for um, this jump to the Industrial Revolution. Yep, you would never have the Industrial Revolution if you didn't have it first in agriculture. Yes. Now all these extra workers are available to work the factories. Exactly. Here's a picture of the farms all closed off. People can experiment on their own areas of land and come up with new inventions. More um, stuff. I want to talk about Jethro Wood. He's okay. my favorite. Oh, really? Uh, he invented an iron plow with standard parts, and the standard parts component is important. Instead of making a whole new plow and it breaks, now you just replace the part that was broken. And the same will be applicable to guns and cars. I was and, just going to say, now, just by the one piece that you're missing are the broken knives. That's right. Have to replace the whole thing. All right, some of the factors of production. So what that means is what do you need in order to start a business? So you all can start a business if you have these three things. You need land, so you need natural resources, you need rivers, whatever it is you need to actually make your product. Um, capital is going to be the money, the tools, the machinery, everything that you need to actually make it. And then the labor or, of course, the workers. You need somebody to actually do the work for you. Oh, yeah. So with those three things, um, any business could um, you know, be started. Is it going to be successful? Eh, we don't know. But. We shall see. <laughs> That's that plow I talked about. Oh, boy. <laughs> so Britain had the three factors of production. They were the first country to industrialize. Mm -hmm. And it helped that they had so many colonies across the world they could trade their products with. They had the best navy in the world to protect their shipping. And there was political stability there. And during the Napoleonic Wars, yeah. Britain was not attacked on their soil. Uh, most of Europe was, was at war for about 25 years. Um, so that helped as well to give British an advantage. And we've talked about that before, about the power of their navy and Britain being an island. So nothing really you know, came to them. And so it was very, very helpful at this time. If you guys are not familiar with the, the word domestic, um, <laughs> my wife was arrested for domestic violence when she oh. beat me up. <laughs> oh, she hit you. Yeah, I deserved it. Oh, that's a shame. Um, but I'm glad you're out on parole so we can make these videos. Um. <laughs> she was the abuser, not me. Oh, yeah, that's right. What am I thinking? Oh. Um. So the domestic system <laughs> is at home. Men and women used to work in their homes making clothing, but now that's going to shift to the factory system where it's going to be done in a, in, a, in a more local place where everyone can gather and, yeah. and just work. Kind of like uh, the assembly line and you know everybody has their their piece of the the puzzle and that's right. they have to do their part to make the product so they're going to invent looms and spinning jennies and spinning mills exciting stuff i know you know so at first they're making clothes but it's going to open up the possibility to make weaponry and ammunition and, and furniture being able to wage war uh, which will be important for for the next chapter imperialism exactly so the factory system, men and women working in a common place. Um, we'll talk a little bit, um, you know, do you guys talk about the Triangle Shirtwaist Fire at all? Um, so making things cheaper, making products cheaper um, to sell. Uh, as the prices go down, the demand goes up, and that just means the factory system, you know, continues to work and hopefully employing more people. That's right. Um, some examples of industrialization, uh, Eli Whitney's cotton gin. Uh, he was from... New Haven, Connecticut, yeah. um, allowed the production of, of cotton a um, hundred times faster. Um, of course, the downside is it sped up slavery um, throughout the United States, but that yeah. was not Eli Whitney's <laughs> fault. 
Um, steam engine was uh, patented 1769 by James Watt, um, a more modern version. So again, this is going to be used for these textile industries yeah. as well as boats. And I feel like once it started, it grew like exponentially. So you have this one little thing, and then eventually all of these new ideas are just going to revolutionize so much quicker. Mm -hmm. that, you know, we had all this time, and then within you know, a few years, 10, 20 years, it's just going to be. That's right. Yeah. Thank There's you. the cotton <laughs> gin right there, short for cotton engine. Oh. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, Bessemer process hey, <laughs> was a way to uh, produce steel um, more efficiently and quickly. Um, yeah. Samuel Morse is going to invent the telegraph. Um, so Morse code? Yeah. Do, 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 do. do you know how to do SOS? No. It's one, two, three, then long, one, two, three, one, two, three. Wow. So three short, three long, three short. SOS. I can't remember that. Yeah. That's complicated. <laughs> uh, John McAdam is going to help a uh, new way to build roads, so now you can travel even if it's raining or poor conditions. And the railroad invented in Britain. Well, quickly steamboat. Spread. And the automobile will come later, revolutionized by Henry Ford. So all these are USA. products of the Industrial <laughs> Revolution. Okay, that concludes section one. Pause until we get to our majority pause. No. Oh. There's the pause button. <laughs> okay, we are back. Chapter nine, section two, industrialization. And here are the effects of, of uh, industrialized town. We see the massive pollution that's... Um, mm -hmm clouding up the skies and I'm sure the rivers and the land as well. I was going to say very little land, you know, visible. Overcrowded standard of living is going to plummet. These are dangerous times. Very dangerous. Um, so some of the effects of machines on work, um, opportunity for a higher standard of living. Um, so even with something like the railroad, people can now like live um, outside of the city, move into the city. Um, it lured those farmers to come into the cities to work in, in the factories. Um, and like I said, they're taking years to learn a trade. You would be an apprentice. Um, we mentioned that in the Middle Ages a little bit. And you would have to follow this person and watch their every move. Uh, but now on a machine, taking up to a few days. Um, even now, they say working at McDonald's, you can master working at McDonald's the machines in um, a few hours even, just because learning the buttons, I mean, there's images on them now. So oh, yeah, okay. it's, um, you know, become less and less of a learning experience and more just, here you go, push your buttons and you're all set. <laughs> you should work there someday. I should, maybe. <laughs> but uh, then I wouldn't be here with you making these awesome videos. Yeah, they're amazing. <laughs> uh, so employers will hire not only just men, but women and, and children will work in these factories mm -hmm. as well. And uh, men were paid double what women were paid, which Ridiculous. makes sense. And women oh, yeah, because you're so much better looking. <laughs> <laughs> and women were paid double what children were made. So. Oh, okay. Hey. Yeah, well, if it was my kids, they don't deserve anything. <laughs> hey, let's shovel the driveway and yeah, get nowhere. Stop eating the yellow snow. <laughs> so there's few opportunities for advancement in these factories. Uh, and when there was too many workers, that meant the wages would go down. Which and also, um, you can get paid in a couple ways. Workers could be paid by the hour or by the number of goods that they produce, which meant if they were doing it that yeah. way, then they're going to work at a frenetic pace. Probably Try skipping get lunch, get as many done as you can, because yeah. nobody's making much money. And there's only a few people in like a managerial position, so like you said, it was very hard to advance. And mm -hmm. they had a lot of control over you, um, whether they paid you or not, based on your you know work production, your attitude, things like that. So um, it wasn't like now where you just get paid a set hour or you know a set wage. Sometimes it could fluctuate depending. So. That's right. And th these jobs are boring. And in factory <laughs> really, work really today, boring. it's still you do the same thing again and again and again. And uh, lots of rules you have to follow. Arrive promptly. Doors will be locked mm -hmm. if you're a minute late. Imagine if that was Maloney. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you in eat 14 days. Uh, some of you would have lost credit a long time ago. <laughs> you eat and take breaks <laughs> when they say you can. Um, I like how they did, did the rule breaking. They'll beat you. Yeah. They can fire you. They can fire you. Fine you. Yeah. Sometimes you need a good crack with the ruler to, you know, get back in line. <laughs> and you're working long hours, 14, yeah. 15, 16 hours a day, six days a week. Yeah, I know it's really boring. I think that there's some people, though, who might have appreciated just, like, having to go in, do their job, go home. and um, But for the majority, eventually this is going to be really, like, you know, back-breaking work, really boring. 
So some of the factory conditions, really noisy. Uh, think of those machines. It's not like they had soundproofing, uh, dirty, poorly ventilated. Um, some, didn't, some floors didn't even have windows, so the dust and the smoke and the oils, the smells, um, poor sanitation. We're not talking about um, even necessarily running water all the time or, um, you know, a properly running sewage systems. Uh, no safety devices, so that could mean, um, you know, fire extinguishers, water available to put out fires. Um, summers, think about here at Maloney, especially in mine and Mr. Loebner's classrooms, hot, steamy, you know, you open the windows, but there's no cross breeze. Winters are really, really cold. Heat's working great if it's not too bad. Um, no child labor laws, so, you know, little kids were perfect for getting into those machines, and, you know, their little hands um, could fix a lot of the problems, and it was very dangerous but they weren't getting compensated or paid um, to put themselves at that risk um, and eventually um, the factory act um, is going to allow for those inspections and hopefully try to enforce some labor laws to avoid some of those accidents on the work you know in the workforce that's only in Britain in America yeah. it's gonna be mm -hmm. another 80 90 years before, before they... this actually you yeah. know happens uh, workers' living conditions, uh, not much better. You're going to live in crowded apartment houses known as tenements where you might see four or five families sharing an apartment, yeah. you know, 10, 12 people to a, to a room Floor sleeping. Or even, and like sharing one bathroom. Yeah, maybe for the whole apartment. Mm -hmm. uh, or an outhouse behind the apartment. <laughs> and if you've ever been in an outhouse, you know. Nope. You want to shake that. Um, so no opportunities for education. Children need to work in the factories to support the family, so they're not going to school. Um, the, oh, I hit the button by accident. The police um, were, were limited, so the, the streets were dangerous. Yep. Um, lots of illness, um, diseases w would sweep through the, the tenements and the factories and just decimate people. Yeah, and it was sad like that that lifestyle, um, you said like crime, people frustrated, not getting paid, not being able to support their families. Um, a lot of people turned to drinking, um, which then increased some of the violence and things that were going on. So it was pretty dangerous all around, not just in the workplace, but mm -hmm. life in general. And losing a father or a mother could send the entire family to starvation because they depended on that money so much. Yep. Eventually the living standard will improve um, and then inexpensive goods will be produced in these factories and, and life will get better, but it's gonna take a long yeah. time. So what does this mean? Um, some people will get an education, um, will uh, have more specialized jobs. So bankers, manufacturers, lawyers, doctors, uh, teachers, you know, like us, uh, maybe not making videos, but um, eventually there'll be this middle class of people who um, have a pretty consistent um, standard of living and don't have to necessarily live paycheck to paycheck. Um, and the Industrial Revolution is going to begin, like it says there in England, and then eventually spread here to the United States. So. Okay, so that concludes section two. Uh, we're not going to do section three, but we'll mm -hmm. see you again for section four. Bye, guys. But first, picture time. Ooh, so we're talking about those little children working in those factories. Look at that, no shoes. It's awful, so dangerous. Um, loose clothing, the hats. There's so many things wrong with that picture right now. Um, so many uh, possibilities of injury, yeah. Um, Same thing here. Yep, that Just guy is clearly the supervisor, um, you know, Definitely doesn't want to don't want to make a mistake under his watch. He looks <laughs> like he's uh, not going to be too happy. <laughs> Here's the the factory town, and look how dark it got from wow, all the smoke. All that pollution, unbelievable. <laughs> all right, we're out. See you later, guys.